Good day and welcome to this episode of Technology Enhanced Learning, the show that features brief summaries about research and innovation in the area of computer-based education. I am your host, Edith Rodrigo, from the Ateneo de Manila University in the Philippines. Today, we are speaking with Professor Xiu Cheng Kong. Professor Kong is currently Professor of the Department of Mathematics and Information Technology and the Director of the Center for Learning, Teaching, and Technology at the Education University of Hong Kong. Professor Kong holds a doctorate from the Department of Computer Science from the City University of Hong Kong. He has produced over 230 academic publications in the areas of pedagogy in the digital classroom and online learning, policy on technology transformed education and professional development of teachers for learner-centered learning, and computational thinking in education. He has completed or conducted 71 research projects since joining the university. Professor Kong is at present serving as the editor-in-chief of two international journals, Research and Practice in Technology Enhanced Learning and the Journal of Computers in Education. He served as the president of the Asia Pacific Society for Computers and Education in 2014 and 2015, and is an APSI fellow. Professor Kong, thank you so much for being with us today. It's so nice to see you, and I hope you're safe. I was hoping to focus today's interview and your research work on teacher professional development and computational thinking. You, you published an article quite recently on a professional development program for primary school teachers uh, in which they were trained in computational thinking. Could you tell us what motivated you to do this study and why it's, it's important to train teachers uh, in CT and why it is important to study the training program? Thank you, Dave. So when we are talking about this uh, computational thinking, uh, myself and as well as my uh, university, the Education University of Hong Kong, we are focusing on even um, more young learners like uh, senior primary students because uh, when they grow up, uh, say 10 years later, they become a very important portion of the population uh, in the city. So the teacher development becomes critical because, you know, in primary education, no matter where you are in Hong Kong or outside Hong Kong, they are very limited. Uh, uh, teachers who have some competency in programming for computational thinking development. For programming and talking about thinking, it seems there is a good match between thinking education in programming education and computational thinking. Because when you have some idea, you generate the idea, you can through the coding and do the testing and debugging and meditate whether you are forward to a certain extent is appropriate or inappropriate. In other words, when we talk about computational thinking, it is about process of solving problems using computational concepts. So in this context, we consider the two very important things. One, the uh, development should be long enough, say in one semester or sometimes even extend across two semesters. So it become a program. And in between, when after they have some initial development uh, through this program, they should go back to the school and try out the teaching in their own classroom. And they make use of what they learn and start the teaching and they come back again to the university for another part, another portion of the teacher development. Okay. Thank you. Um, in your article, you describe your proposed pedagogy as to play, to think, and to code. And I was wondering, could you tell us what these different stages are? Let me um, go back to those days when we are studying programming when we are young. In those days, they give you questions, a problem, usually it's a problem statement. And then you have to read the problem statement and then try to develop some solution to address the problem stipulated by the university staff. Now, we are talking about young kids, like eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old. They're so young. If you give them a problem statement, definitely they don't know what is going on. What's that? They have no experience in programming at all when they begin, right? No idea. So for young kids, the only thing is, okay, 
there is a program you want them to develop. Now, this time, we ask them, okay, you play around with the final product. The play around means, yes, you are playful in a manner. But when they are playing, that is a very good start of understanding the problem of what it is. And when they play around, they have to sit down. And then as a whole class, the teachers will guide them. What do you think? What, what have you done when you're playing around? What's that? What is the part that you feel most fun? Uh, which part is most attractive to you? Just say something. Okay. It tells you, ah, this part is really good. Then you can step in for another question. Ah, what are you, what, what, what you have done with this, um, funding part? What do you do? Do you input anything? Any any feedback from them? So actually, when we start with the playing, there is a second part. The second part to start with is ask the students to recall what they, what they have done previously. And this thinking back is guiding them to divide the problem into smaller parts. Because so, so many parts we are playing. You, you, you can tell me there are several parts. But we can, as a teacher, focus on some part more easier to start with for the coding process. So actually, to play is the starting. To think and to cope will be an iteration going forward and back. Uh, uh, so, so that's why actually it's not simple free wording. But why we use the to play to think to cope as the slogan? Because the teachers are really very outsider. They have no idea what is programming education. So we use a slogan say, well, easy to play, to think, to cope. Just um, now it's widely spread in Hong Kong. So everyone can be talk about programming. Just think, we know what to do to play first and then to think and then to go. So this is a very strategic slogan to um, cheer up the teachers from all walks of life across disciplines. So that's the beginning of our course. Thank you. I think you've, you've answered quite a lot of the questions that, that I had lined up. So I will, uh, if, if it's okay with you, I'll skip over to the ones that we haven't touched on. Um, many of the members of our community in APSI come from contexts that have limited resources. So they, they come from uh, contexts where their, their schools are under-resourced. Um, in contexts like this, how do we introduce computational thinking? I mean, is it, is it still possible to do so, or how would they be able to go about it? Yeah, so it is uh, quite common uh, around globally that uh, many regions, countries actually uh, is not uh, in a good condition. And even to become a teacher, the condition may not be so favorable uh, in promoting uh, programming education. So how to start with uh, in regions like that? So now we, told, we choose um, Scratch programming. Whenever you have a computer, you can be connected to the Scratch programming environment locally. Okay. Okay. So anyone can access Scratch programming. So that's why we start with Scratch programming. The second part, most fundamental and most difficult, is the teacher development. Because the students themselves cannot just learn by playing around. They need ideas facilitation. So teacher development uh, in our first phase and now in our second phase is completely different. In the first phase, when you read the paper in 2020 of computers and education, we spend um, 78 hours. 78 hours, not many, many hours for teacher development. But now we are using another mode, uh, using four stages. Each stage with only 12 hours. So if you want to use Scratch programming to develop computational thinking, what you need to do is only 12 hours um, teacher development. Now, in terms of this 12, how, 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 how do we derive from 12? Now, it is actually six hours, one whole day. Three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, just one whole day. Come to the university, uh, the education university, whole day, leaving the school, coming to our campus whole day, and then they learn Scratch programming together with their pedagogy. They have to go back to the school to start teaching. teaching. Then this kind of um, teacher development becomes less expensive and more uh, uh, feasible uh, in terms of the uh, school principals to uh, plan 
for some teachers to join the program and have the development. And in between, sometimes we have some school visits uh, to, the, uh, to the school to, to see what problem, what kind of problem they are encountering. We as the developer, teacher developer, can we consider when they come back what support they need. And usually we ask the school to form their own community of practice among the field teachers. There's not only one teacher teaching in one school, a few teachers ask them to form a COP to support each other and to um, uh, to have lesson observation among themselves and uh, lesson preparation together like that. So this is the model that we consider is more scalable uh, for anywhere around the world. So thank you, Professor Kong. As a last question, I wanted to tap, to tap into your expertise as a as a, an academic writer. You have you are currently uh, editor in chief of two international journals, and you have a long history of academic publishing. Uh, we have many members of, of our community who are young researchers and perhaps are just starting off as as uh, academic authors themselves they may be doing some good work but maybe they don't have the confidence to to publish um would you please share some advice or guidance that uh, that can help them yeah thank you as a beginner or as a young scholar i think the most important part is one thing is to identify some uh area that it is really trendy. I mean, um, that you have to do something in sync with what the world is looking for, some solution. So this kind of identification of uh, the niche uh, is one very important start point. So how to identify the niche? Sometimes, of course, attending FC's conferences is very important. <laughs> and uh, getting along with the, some experienced re uh, researcher like you, uh, like like me, to have some dialogue. And sometimes this dialogue in the conference or in some occasion is just a start point. When you get connected, you have to be in connect with some uh, senior or experienced researchers working, working together. Because when we are talking about identify the leech is not easy. Because the whole big idea will be okay. But you have to go into the in-depth understanding of what is in taking off at the moment. And when you do that and publish it immediately, you may get a high impact because of you're doing something important to be considered by the researcher around the world. So in that case, sometimes if you are confident, com confident enough, you can start by yourself. But if you consider it's better to have a teamwork with a few a partner or one or two partners, I think that will be another critical consideration to start with a good career. Of course, everyone wants to be an independent researcher very soon. So this period may not be long. Uh, sometimes it can be sustainable if the team works out. Well. Sometimes you can just switch on from one to another so that you can develop yourself. I think um, everybody can become a good researcher if you are working consistently and persistently with some pursuit. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I wanted to say you have a, sorry, I, I just remembered, you have a conference coming up this June in Delft, correct? Is that? Yes, that is uh, Computational Thinking Education, right. hyphen STEM Education. Yeah. Right. I, I will be, I believe I will be in the Netherlands at the time. So I'm hoping to attend. Yeah. Thank you for joining us because this will, this will be continued after Delft. It will be in Taiwan and Si Yuling, Professor Si Yuling will be the another host uh, for the next one. So it will be an ongoing process. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping to attend. Uh, if, if, well, assuming the COVID situation is, uh, is better or continues to improve, then, then I will try to attend. Possible. Um, By 2023, maybe possible. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then uh, I'm very, very intrigued by your your twelve uh, your twelve hour training program. So I'll I'll look into it more. Maybe it's something that we can do in the Philippines as well. As, uh, see what All right. So but, we're writing a paper on the uh, six hour plus six hour model. Hopefully, okay. can we come up 
uh, in a few months' time so that we can share with more people about the details on doing that. And hopefully, you can do this in Philippines very soon. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Professor Kong, for your time. Thank you for your time. And thank you for sharing your, your, some of your expertise with us. Um, we hope that you stay safe, continue to stay safe, and hopefully uh, we will see each other face-to-face -face soon. Thank you, Didi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.